Riyadh and Nast are ours! Either we will take it back, or we die. غزوة استهدفت الرياض فملأت جزيرة العرب دما. What's wrong with blood? A kingdom is only taken with blood. The Sultan will never be obeyed, but by the salt. كيف رفع من أجل الملك والسلطان فارتوت الرمال بالدم Raid Hayal Destroy Shuma and Rashid family ملك الرمال قريبا في الصالات السينمائية السورية The Guardian newspaper says that Australian authorities cancelled the passports of 20 Australians for fear of their joining the terrorists in Syria. And the Russian Foreign Ministry says any foreign intervention in Syria outside the United Nations Security Council would only increase the deterioration of the situation and the suffering of the people. Units of the Syrian Arab Army control a Nebuk city in Damascus countryside completely and chase the terrorists in the orchards nearby. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. The Russian Foreign Ministry asserted that Russia is convinced that any foreign intervention in the crisis in Syria outside the United Nations Security Council would only increase the deterioration in the difficult situation there, increasing the suffering of the Syrian people, in addition to curtailing their chances to reach an agreement among the Syrian parties. The ministry said in its statement that Moscow would continue to insist that Iran should participate in Geneva II conference on Syria. More reports are speaking about the rising number of foreign terrorists fighting in Syria. The British paper The Guardian said that the security and intelligence organization in Australia cancelled the passports of 20 Australians, including a man who admitted that he fabricated videotapes about the situation in Syria. The Australian authorities were afraid that these citizens intended to go to Syria to join terrorist groups linked to Al-Qaeda. These reports came within the context of regional and international fears of the increasing number of foreign jihadists infiltrating into Syria across the Turkish borders. A military source asserted that the Syrian Arab Armed Forces controlled the town of Annabek in Damascus countryside after a series of accurate tactical operations, that lasted f the last of which was carried out last night. The army continued to chase the terrorists in the surrounding area. In the same context, units of the Syrian Arab Army defeated numbers of Lebanese and Saudi terrorists and captured booby-trapped cars, one of which carried Lebanese license plates.
In the Pakistani capital, Islamabad, the second meeting of the Executive Council of the Asian Parliamentary Society began with the participation of the Syrian delegation led by the Speaker of the People's Assembly, Jihad al Khan. The meeting discussed the issues listed on its agenda, its expressed appreciation of Syria's chairing of the society and running its work in the past despite the difficult circumstances. On the other hand, Mr. al Khan met the Deputy Chairman of the Iranian Shura Council, Mohammad Hassan at Abu Turabi, and discussed with him relations between the two countries, the issues on the agenda and ways and means of confronting international terrorism at the parliamentary, regional and world levels. The Ministry of Health yesterday launched a nationwide vaccination campaign against polio that targets 2.2 million children under five and will last for five days. The campaign is one of a series of other campaigns which the Ministry will launch successively after 17 cases of polio infections have been confirmed in Syria. Minister of Health Saad Naif said in a press statement following his tour to a number of centers and schools in Damascus that the polio cases detected in Syria recently is linked to the strain of Pakistani origin found in sewage in Egypt and the Palestinian territories in the past year, as confirmed by the World Health Organization in a statement in November. In a statement late November, Mr. Anayev said the number of polio infections confirmed in Syria is 17, 13 of them in Al Mayadeen, two in Deir Zor, one in Aleppo, and another in Douma of Damascus countryside. He added that the campaign will coincide with similar immunization campaigns that will be launched in Syria's neighboring countries, noting that this will help ensure accessing every Syrian child wherever he or she is. Around 3,751 mobile teams with 707 trainers and supervisors have been mobilized to make the campaign a success. Al Naif said the ministry has set up a comprehensive plan on the national level and on the level of each of the provinces, as well as sub plans on the level of areas to ensure widest vaccination coverage, noting that this has been done in cooperation with the international health organizations, the United Nations Child's Fund, and the Syrian Arab Red Crescent. He affirmed that the vaccines were imported from the best international companies and will be given to children for free without the need for any identification documents or immunization cards for the children. The 16th Al Basel exhibition for creativity and invention kicked off yesterday at the Patent Center in Damascus. The three-day event is organized by the Ministry of Internal Trade and Consumer Protection in cooperation with the Syrian Inventors Society, the General Establishment of Markets and General Establishment of Fairs and Exhibitions. Trade and Consumer Protection Minister said that the exhibition seeks to support inventors and help them receive international recognition. In turn, the Education Minister said that inventors of various ages are participating in the exhibition, which represents a chance to let the whole world know the inventions of the Syrian people. For his part, Higher Minister of Higher Education said that Syria's innovative youth proved to be indomptable and that their will to live is stronger than terrorism. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy. Now for the latest in business and market news with Vani Konejian, but after a short break. Good afternoon. Minister of Electricity said that the direct reason for the increase of the hours of electricity rationing is the armed terrorist group's systematic attack against the electricity station and the power transmission lines. In an interview with the Syrian TV channel, Mr. Hamis confirmed that the ministry holds full responsibilities for conducting power to all the citizens in Syria, confirming that the ministry is doing its best to restore the service to 47 stations which have become out of service. He added that the armed terrorist groups attacked four high-tension lines in Aleppo electricity station, causing that Aleppo fell in complete darkness. 
He pointed out that the reality of electricity in Syria before the crisis emulated the indicators of developed countries as for generation, transmission and distribution. As the person consumption rate reached 2,500 kilowatts in 2010. He added that despite the difficulties due to the terrorist attacks, the ministry ensures the electricity power by 60 to 70 percent of the citizens' needs. He asserted that the government spares no efforts to meet the citizens' needs, noting that the government signed 16 contracts on importing electricity equipment from Iran in addition to signing cooperation agreements on power exchange with most of the neighboring countries. Statistics in the Ministry of Agriculture showed positive results in spite of the troubles Syria is going through, pointing out to the lands and the incomes of most of the crops like wheat. As lands cultivated with wheat exceeded 160,000 hectares, while the production was over 3,060,000 tons. The manager of the fuel company stressed that the company has started using the smart cards since the beginning of the current month in eight public sectors. In order to make sure that it can be generalized during these current circumstances, indicating that most of oil derivatives were provided in Damascus City normally, as the south area's needs are also being provided, specifically in the country's stations. Sources of a Thoda journal asserted that there is a study concerning repricing the materials in the Syrian local markets and importing them, adding that this pro procedure will reset most of the prices in addition to a new importing mechanism which may reassure the arrival of these needed materials to the citizens with reasonable prices. Futures of Brent crude stabilized near $112 per barrel due to hopeful statements from both the U.S. and China. The Brent price rose 11 cents per barrel after rising over $1 in the previous session, as futures of the U.S. crude were 18 cents higher, while most of the U.S. statements showed that the unemployment rate has dropped to its lowest level since November 2008. The European shares paired with advance as gauge of mining companies declined, offsetting a report that showed Chinese exports climbing more than expected. The US index futures were little changed, while the Asian shares rose for the first time in four days after better than forecast growth in the US jobs and the Chinese exports, which boosted investors' confidence. And now over to some main currencies exchange rates according to the Bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria. With this we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.